Hello friends of Fred and John Talks. Welcome back. We're filming from a very nice location and I happen to be looking for John and Fred right now. Let's see where they are. John seems to be sitting out there on the deck. Let's go out and find out if Fred is with him and what are they up to. Isn't this a beautiful setting? They're on the deck. The backdrop is awesome. It's a beautiful day and they're just waiting to talk to you. Here they are and I will hand it over to them so they can take over and uh, tell you what they need to tell you today. Welcome once again to Fred and John Talks. I'm Fred and this is my buddy John, my, my best friend. And um, as we always say, we uh, love doing these videos. We hope that uh, you enjoy them, you spread the word, uh, that you get something out of them and that it enhances your life in some fashion. Why don't you talk about today's topic? Today's topic, Fred, is a serious one, but we're going to have a little fun with it. It's about retirement. Mm, I like that topic. <clears throat> you and I have kicked this around several times as to whether to do it or not, but I think now is a good time to talk about retirement. It's, I'm fully it's, retired. It's timely. And you're uh, half retired, semi retired. Uh, how do you describe that? You you work sometimes. Oh, you want me to go first? No, you you just you're just partly retired, right? I work six days a month. Six days a month. Okay. But I'll I'll elaborate on that later on. as we go. You know, I discovered in some readings that um, it all depends on where you're born and why you're born and where you're born. And I was born in in Kansas in 1942 and so i fall into what's been described as the silent generation which were birth dates 1928 to 1945. now you know about generation x and generation y i've heard the phrases but i don't know what they mean i haven't bothered to look up the definitions of them yeah. uh, but i don't understand why my generation that i was born in would be called the silent generation that's a mystery <clears throat> to me I'm anything but silent. I don't even know what it means. Well, I'm not silent. I've, I've never been silent. I was a Berkeley radical at the yeah. University of California. Mm -hmm. I've been in Sydney, Australia, being trained as a physician. I've been traveling around the world sometimes. Even when I moved to Winchester, Virginia, I was uh, on the bandwagon of, of Cardinal uh, Glass putting in a, a big facility in, in Winchester. And I was kind of an agitator and advocate of getting rid of Cardinal Glass. So I'm anything but silent. I want my public to know that I, I, I'm not, I may be part of the silent generation, but I'm not silent. You're a go-getter. I'm a go-getter. In fact, I think that's a, a, a moniker of the Fred and John Talks. I think another thing I like mm. to do is, is Fred and John Talks. Mm. This gives me an outlet. Mm. Talking to people, uh, expressing myself, having conversations with you, is something that really, really fires me up and gets me into doing research and reading. It's really a lot of fun and a lot of learning. Who, who would have thought that it depends on actually where and when you were born? You know, if you were born in Finland, Sweden, Denmark, some research is showing that I might be happier yeah. at this stage yeah. than living Particularly in America. Particularly Finland. Especially so Finland. I, yeah. I, uh, hardly uh, a day goes by when I don't read something about retirement online. And in particular, I want to focus on, um, because of the economics and the taxes in America, it's where are the best places overseas for Americans oh, to retire? Okay, okay. And the results vary. Uh, there's different countries that come in as number one. But two days ago, I read something that made me very happy. Number one was Italy. Italy. And I've lived in Italy for two years. You happen to be Italian too. That's And I happen to be Italian. And uh, it was really interesting to read about the, um, you know, uh, comfortable financial uh, situation that you wouldn't have in America. Well, yeah, America right now is in a lot of uh, turmoil, as, as a lot of people know. This is now uh, May of 2024, where we're doing this episode. And there are a lot of issues going on in the world and a lot of things affecting Americans that are not very pleasant. Uh, the state of our economy is not particularly good and there's a lot of inflation. The cost of goods and services, gasoline is all very high. 
So it really does depend on when when you retire, how old you are when you retire, and where you retire, and I where wanna, you go to. I want to piggyback on what you're saying because uh, you can't make this stuff up in terms of timing. Over the last three or four days, I've talked to two guys who are retired, mm -hmm. but not super comfortably, and they both were talking about how their financial situation. It, one of the guys is a retired airline pilot the other guy's a retired construction worker and they both using almost the same word saying my situation financially is i might have to go out and get a part-time job well you you when you see people working at various uh businesses like walmart and uh, grocery stores you see a lot of people who are definitely beyond 60 years of age yeah, sometimes beyond 70. I was listening to a, a video that was done in Los Angeles the other day called uh, The Un, um, Unfriendly, Unlonely Project. Actually, Unlonely Project. It's, yeah. it's a book written by Dr. Jeremy Noble. He was a Harvard, a Harvard doctor. And one of the things he's saying is that Human beings right now in America and some in some parts of the world are not in homeostasis, meaning the environment and the person is not in a good relationship with their environment and surroundings. And he's coined a phrase called sociostasis. Mm -hmm. And sociostasis, according to Dr. Noble, is a state where people feel vulnerable, fearful. They don't feel uh, safe and secure. They don't have good relationships with government. A good relationship with other people mm. they withdraw they don't have uh, meaningful connections uh, yeah. and you and i talk about we talk about this a lot that that's so much needed mm -hmm. and one of the other things that he's talked about in in his elaboration of how to attack uh loneliness is to um, <clears throat> have a faith or to have some religious affiliation or be associated with a group where you will be able to engage yeah and he thinks people who have beliefs and belief systems and who have mm -hmm. uh, some uh, religious background and affiliation of faith and spirituality would actually do better. So my suggestion at this point is we tell our personal stories of retirement. Well, my own personal story is that uh, at around 71, I decided to give up the ship practicing medicine. And uh, I'd stopped doing uh, delivering of babies, and then I stopped doing uh, general surgery and small surgeries. And I did a, about eight or nine years of osteoporosis management for helping people with fractures, yeah. mostly women. Yeah. I didn't do the surgery to help fractures, but I did the medical application of drugs and medications. Mm -hmm. That was and the latter part of your career. That was the latter part. And I did a, a lot of uh, reading of uh, bone densities. Mm -hmm. I was qualified and certified to read bone densities. Mm -hmm. And that was probably one of the more interesting aspects of my career because I saw more men than I used to when I was doing OBGYN. Yeah. My clientele were female. Yeah. But uh, when I turned to doing osteoporosis, I had a lot of a lot of male patients, <clears throat> and I discovered that a lot of young men have bad bone, hmm. which was kind of uh, seemed like an outlier. But what I found in doing research, Fred, is that a lot of them drink so uh, types of drinks, soda soda drinks and carbonated drinks, hmm. and all that helps reduce calcium out of bone. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And some of them have fractures in their 40s and 50s when they really shouldn't be fractured. So what was your transition from, uh, you know, 40 years of working uh, as a doctor to uh, being retired? What was it like? Because uh, these same two guys that I spoke to, they said they had trouble with their transition from working to not working. And they were bored and they were looking for new hobbies. What yeah. was yours like? I think the first couple of years, I kept wondering why my beeper wasn't going off. <laughs> <laughs> I kept feeling like somebody needs me someplace. There must be a woman in trouble, uh, but, my <laughs> but my phone's not going off. But I eventually got, uh, got uh, that subdued itself. I think I turned myself more into sport, activity, tennis, bicycling. I used to make a joke, Fred, that I'd have to exercise and do exercise half the day in order to be able to have enough energy to work the other, the other <laughs> half the day. 
But when you're that's fully, good thinking. When you're fully retired, you need to dedicate time to exercise and taking care of your health. There's no doubt about that. Which you've done an excellent job at, may I say? Well, I, I keep at it. Uh, I think another thing that uh, interested me back in 2010 and 11 and 12 was I joined an investment club. And that got my mind stimulated about following stocks and shares mm -hmm. and, re and retirement funds. Mm -hmm. So I continue uh, with that as well. Uh, apart from that, another group of people I engage with is pickleball. As yep. you know, I'm a big yep. pickleball fan. I yep. love pickleball. You're a pickleball rock star. <laughs> I don't know about that. I know one thing, the younger people who are taking up pickleball highly disturb me because they beat me soundly and very badly. <laughs> And I don't know why they play. They should they should keep to themselves. <laughs> I enjoy pickleball immensely. But you know, in the last couple of years, Fred, I think one of the most rewarding things I've done is what we're doing now. Mm. I really, really enjoy uh, YouTube. Uh, to some people, I privately say it's my last revenge to be able to talk and to say things I believe. Yeah. And nobody listens to me at home, so I have a <laughs> Now, now I have a chance to express myself. <laughs> well, you let me know when I can chime in with my semi-retirement Go. Okay. So I'm going to tell um, my tale. It's part woe and part uh, uh, positive. Uh, I am semi-retired. I have been a therapist for 32 years, as you know. Yes. But I've worked in the field of social work for 40 years. Now, the joke I have with my friends is, what do you call a person who's been working in social work for 40 years? Retired. <laughs> However, um, with malice toward none, including no malice toward my ex-wife, um, my divorce eight years ago was detrimental to my retirement income. And... Um, so I can't fully retire. I'll be 68 in August. I would have liked to retire at 65, but I cannot. But I can, and I do, work six days a month. I see counseling clients six days a month. And I have a little bit of the best of both worlds. I was saying before that I've talked to two guys recently, but I've talked to dozens of guys who had a hard time transitioning into full retirement. Because they didn't have a lot of things that I do have. A friend group, hobbies, right. you know, yes, things I enjoy. I do a lot of volunteer work. Yes. So I have a very full life. My Our YouTube channel, yes. which, which are, you know, we put a lot of time and creativity and energy into. So on one hand, you know, and being a praying man, yeah, I still pray every day to God, and I ask for my friends who are prayer warriors, pray to God that I can fully retire from counseling. Now, let me put you, a cop. You, you'd like to spend all of your time with the nonprofits and other work, wouldn't you? Yeah, the way I put it is, I don't want to retire to sit in a rocking chair. No, no. I want to retire to do my volunteer work, yes. uh, put more energy and creativity into our YouTube program, uh, pursue my hobbies. As you know, I'm a big flower gardener. Mm -hmm. I chop wood and, and uh, have a fire pit. I have a, a huge friend group. Uh, I have a faith sharing group that meets at my house once a month. I have a men's fire pit night that meets once a month. We're meeting tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, yes. Um, so, as I said, I don't want to retire to sit in a rocking chair. I want to retire to do my volunteer work and my hobbies and spend time with my friends, but maybe let the last word be that I do feel blessed despite all the things that didn't go well with my uh, plans, uh, financial plans after my divorce. I really have the best of both worlds as compared with some guys who are fully retired and they're not happy. If you, if you, if you, yeah, if you retire and you don't have connections and you don't have goals. Yeah, right? they're restless, they're bored. Right. Yes. They often start to drink more and, yes. and things like this. So I, really, when it comes down to it, I feel very blessed. But uh, I have another last word to say. I have a financial planner 
-hmm. and we have had a five-year plan, which we're three years into. So okay. I don't, I only have two more years. Like I said, I'll be 68 in August. Mm -hmm. We're, we're uh, targeting age 70 to retire. Okay. Uh, next year, I am probably going to go to working four days a month. So I'm going to gradually okay. work my way toward full retirement. Kind of plateau God, out. God willing, mm -hmm. God willing, at age 70 in two years. And you know what? Two years is going to go like that. <laughs> you know, I think in, to a certain extent, I've, I've known you a long time, Fred. I think to a certain extent, work for you is a very valuable connection. It's not that you're just doing good for people and getting some positive feedback, which I kind of miss having been a physician, seeing a problem or a situation or a diagnosis resolved and improved. You know, taking care of people like you do and seeing positive results is very gratifying. Uh, you, you almost read my mind there because uh, I left out that you know, even though I would like to be retired from counseling because of how mentally draining it is, I still get enormous gratification out of helping people. As a matter of fact, this is not to brag, but I do a good bit of pro bono work for, for clients who can't pay. For free. You know, divorced women who got left in the lurch financially by okay. their, you know, idiot husbands, uh, things like this. I've told my pro bono clients that I said, don't worry, even if I fully retire, I will still see you for free. Well, that's really, that's really something, Fred, to have that kind of devotion. I mean, that's a spiritual thing to be helping people like that. And that's mm -hmm. my way of giving back and giving back for all the blessings mm -hmm. God has sent my way over my, the course of my 40-year mm -hmm. uh, career. Well, I think that's probably enough for our YouTube fans to chew on today. And uh, we'll sign off and hope that you uh, will like us on Facebook and spread the word and let other people know about Fred and John Talks. We have a lot of videos about a lot of different topics. We tend to focus in on loneliness and mental health diseases and things like that. In fact, May, which is this month, Fred, is Mental Health Awareness, mental health awareness week. Month. So I think yeah. it's a timely topic. And I want to put a shout out before we sign off to those who are nearing retirement do retirement planning yes. not only financial but what are you going to do with your time you know uh, how how is your life going to be enriched with all this free time you now have after working for 30 40 50 years so that's a thing too okay that's a wrap that's a wrap ciao good job buddy thank you